Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today for Precision Digital's look at a Jet A1 fuel tank level monitoring solution. Uh, this is the second in a series of webinars where we go over specific applications, and this one has to do with Precision Digital's Protex Max explosion proof controller pairing up with the ABB LLT100. Before we get started here today, just a couple of quick bookkeeping notes. The most common questions that we get asked during these webinars are, can I get access to the slides and whether or not the webinar is being recorded? We certainly are recording today's webinar, and we will make that video and the slides from today available to you in an email that you should get by early next week. That email will go out to everyone who registered for the webinar, uh, those who registered, as well as those who registered and attended. Secondly, you may have noticed that you are all in listen-only mode. Uh, there's simply too many people on the line for us to have everyone with an open phone line. However, as we go through the application today, if you have questions, I would encourage you to type those questions into the chat box that's likely in the lower left-hand corner of your screen if you're on a PC. That way we can address those questions when we get to the end of the webinar. And if we don't get to your questions, either due to complexity or time, we'll be able to follow up with you after the webinar is complete. With that, let me introduce myself. My name is Joe Ryan. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing with Precision Digital. And today, we'll be getting a presentation by Owen Peters, our Regional Field Sales Manager. He's done frequent in-person uh, engagements in these applications out in the field with our distributor partners, working with all kinds of transmitters and other equipment that tend to be paired up with Precision Digital. And I think he's going to be able to give us a great walkthrough of not only this specific application today, but why Precision Digital in general pairs up great with ABB transmitters like the LLT100. Now, before we go ahead and get started, I hand you off to Owen. I've got a general question for you in the audience here. Have you ever sold a Precision Digital meter with an ABB transmitter? And if you're going to go ahead and click yes here, I would just ask you to type into your chat box a little bit about it. What was the Precision Digital product? Perhaps what was the ABB item that you were selling? For those of you clicking no, my hope is that by the end of the day, you see the great advantages of pairing up your ABB with Precision Digital and that it's something you're going to be able to go out there and do very shortly. All right, well, thank you very much. And with that, Owen, I will hand it off to you to review the application. All right. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for being with me here today. Um, this project started... Uh, with a contractor who typically supplies storage tanks for retail uh, gas stations. And they had been tasked with supplying a, a much larger storage tank for an airport to hold some jet fuel. And uh, this tank was going to be 48 feet high, which is quite high. Um, so they needed to measure the level of that tank and also provide uh, an indication of that for the local operators at the airport. This posed a couple of different challenges from an application standpoint. Uh, as mentioned, you know, this is the tank. It's 48 feet high. So the contractor was used to providing mechanical float type uh, sensors that work very well if your tank is only 5 or 10 feet tall, but they get quite expensive if you need a, a 40 or 50 foot mechanical gauge, and they can also be prone to uh, mechanical failure and maintenance. Additionally, uh, you'll note that this tank is in a tropical location. It's out in the Bahamas, and so there are wide temperature variations in ambient temperature uh, in the summer months. Ambient temperatures get in excess of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and then they do drop off um, during the night. And so this can cause condensation to form inside the tank. And as you may or may not know, water inside of jet fuel is horrible. There are many internal pr processes along the, uh, the jet fuel supply line to ensure that, that water does not enter in uh, to an airplane jet fuel tank. Additionally, uh, being in the Bahamas, being in the tropics, bright sunlight can make digital indicators difficult to read. 
Uh, as you may remember, if you ever try to look at your cell phone when it's outside, the glare can make digital screens quite hard to see. And so they needed something that was very easy to read uh, at a distance in the direct sunlight conditions. So for this solution, um, they chose the ABB LLT100 laser level sensor shown here on the top. Uh, one of the distinct advantages of this sensor is a uh, long distance measuring of up to 100 feet. So with this 40 foot tall tank, um, there is no additional cost for that height. Um, the sensor is also very accurate. Kind of worked out that there's a, a diesel generator a couple hundred yards away in the facility that was causing very, very small vibrations in the uh, surface level of the, the fuel, and the sensor was picking up on those vibrations, and they had to, to dampen it out. So the sensor is very accurate from a very long distance at a uh, economic cost. Additionally, the heated lens on the ABB LLT100 keeps condensation off of the sensor head. It's able to regulate the temperature difference between the hot ambient daytime temperatures and the, the cooler nighttime temperatures. And so this makes the uh, measurement easier to do with the laser, and it also reduces the water getting into the jet fuel storage. Finally, there are no moving parts to maintain. Uh, the customer has a lot of experience with the uh, mechanical flow types that uh, can are prone to failure, but that is not an issue with the ABB LLT100. At the bottom of the tank, the customer used the PD8765 Protex Max display that displayed the engineering uh, units in percentage full. Um, this is a fully approved hazardous area explosion proof device and completely weatherproof. The IP68 housing, so there's no problem with the, the tropical storms that frequently come through. It remains functional. Additionally, the digits are 1.2 inches tall. The very bright LEDs can be seen from 30 or 40 feet away. Uh, even in the bright tropical sunlight. I think the most important feature and the real, um, the real catalyst to this application was our dual 24-volt DC power supplies on the display that operate both the heated lens option and the 4 to 20 milliamp process loop for the sensor. This is shown in a little bit more detail on this diagram. This is the wiring diagram for the PD8765 display. In the top right-hand corner, we have auxiliary power. So that would be 110 volts AC commonly available around the plant. That will turn the display on. And then as shown in the top left corner, we have uh, P1 plus and P1 minus on terminals three and four and then P2 plus and P2 minus on terminals one and two. Those are isolated 24 volt DC power supplies. So uh, power supply one is a 200 milliamp power supply, and that is being used to power the heated uh, lens option on the LLT100, which only requires 100 milliamps of power, so there's plenty there to run it. And then we have the second isolated power supply running the 4 to 20 milliamp process loop. This power supply is only 40 milliamps, but that is still plenty enough to run the uh, process loop maxing out at maybe 25 milliamps. So once that loop is received back in, um, display can be scaled for a variety of engineering units. This customer chose percentage full, just 0 to 100 percent. Um, for the operators. From there, there's also an isolated milliamp output. So uh, the input can be retransmitted onto a uh, PLC or recorder or SCADA system for remote monitoring. Additionally, there are some serial communication capabilities, uh, including Modbus RTU. So the PD8 
really makes a, an excellent junction box, display, power supply, isolator, retransmission for the ABB LLT100 sensor as shown here in this diagram. It's a pretty simple application. Just to sum it all up, once again, we had the ABB LLT100 installed up at the top of the tank, measuring up distances of up to 48 feet, providing a 4 to 20 milliamp signal back into the PD8765, which is also powering the heated lens option and retransmitting the signal back to the control room while also providing display for the operators in nice, large, bright digits. Well, thank you very much, Owen. I appreciate you walking us through that application and really summarizing for us at the end there why the Precision Digital TD8765 was such a great pairing with that ABB LLT100. So based on that presentation, I have a question for you in the audience. What do you think really was the most useful feature of the PD8 Protex Max used in this application? What made it able to be used here? Uh, that feature that without which it probably wouldn't have done the job. Do you think it was the 24 volt DC transmitter power supplies that in this case were running both the heated lens and the laser level transmitter portions of the LT100? Do you think it was the direct sunlight readable display? Maybe it was the hazardous area approvals or did it really need all three in order to do its job in this application? I'll give you one more second to bring some answers in. And sure enough, uh, those of you who did all of the above as your answer, you are correct. You know, in this particular case, it had to have the power supply, or in this case, power supplies, in order to run that loop and provide that heated lens. Um, being able to do that replaced one, if not two, different power supply components that would have had to be a part of this system, and certainly would have made it much more complicated. Uh, as Owen mentioned, this is down in a part of the world where direct sunlight readability is very hard. There is some bright direct sunlight for a good portion of the day. And the ability to be able to read this signal uh, outdoors by the tank was really valuable. And that's where Precision Digital Sunlight Readable, LED, uh, sunlight, sunlight readable LEDs uh, really worked well. And, of course, it needs the hazardous area approvals that come with the Protex Max. Otherwise, it never could have gone in this location where they wanted it. Uh, that was simply a must-have in order to be able to work next to a jet fuel tanker or a jet fuel tank. And so really all three of those elements played a role in making the Protex Mac the, the choice here to go with that LLT100. One final question for you before we take a couple of questions. Uh, would you like Owen to contact you about this or maybe another precision digital application you have in mind? Is there anything uh, that you'd like to talk to us about, about this or another ABB transmitter? Uh, or perhaps you just wanted to know more about how we wired or programmed it. So if you'd like Owen to reach out, Go ahead and check yes here, and we'll be happy to contact you after the presentation's over. And before we go, a few things. We've got a couple of questions here. We're going to answer those. Uh, but also, we've got Owen's email right here on the screen. So if you'd like to reach out to him direct, please feel free to do so. Also, I will note that uh, there is a survey after the conclusion of the webinar. If you have to have that pop up, I would appreciate you taking it as that brief survey is going to tell us not only how we did today, but what more you'd like to see from Precision Digital in these sorts of presentations. With that, let's take a couple of questions. Doug has a great question here. The 4 to 20 milliamp output from the P Precision Digital unit is passive, correct? Requiring an external power supply to drive the loop. And the answer to that is a yes and a no. And so let me jump back to that wiring diagram that I wanted to share earlier. Um, as you can see here, there are two power supplies with the, this version of the, the Protex Max. And here's your two pins for your milliamp output. So yes, this, these two pins, the, the I plus and the I minus, represent a passive 4 to 20 milliamp output. Now normally, if this were not an LLT100 requiring two power supplies, uh, someone would use one of the power supplies we give to pair it up with the 4 to 20 milliamp loop. Uh, going out, and then they pair up the other power supply with your milliamp input to power that and possibly the two-wire transmitter. Now, in this case, we've got both power supplies 
occupied with the LLT100. So one option would be to use a power supply located, for example, in the control room or at the PLC to run that passive 4 to 20 milliamp output loop from the PDH 765. However, what I would probably recommend is that you just use that P1 power supply to run that analog output in addition to the heater. Uh, the heater in this is just a resistive element. It's, it's a very simple component. It's not going to add any kind of significant amount of noise or problem to your signal. And if you use the P1 plus and minus to also drive your analog output, you're going to maintain the isolation that you have between the two power supplies, assuming, which I, I believe is correct, that the heater and the signal are isolated from each other on the LLT100. So if I were going to do this application, I think what I would do is I would just wire up my P plus into that loop and then bring that back and, and bring it back into that P1 power supply. And so you, you could use an external power supply, but I don't think you have to. Uh, in this case, I would just use the power supplies that the PD8765 provides, even though you might be powering three things. With that, we had one other question, which was just about the PD8 in general, and they wanted to know, it looks like, if we go to a picture on that, that there are buttons on the front. Can those be used through the glass? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, there are safe touch through glass buttons on this PD8. Uh, very keen eyes there to Kent, who saw those little buttons on the front. Um, those are indeed infrared buttons that you push buttons on this display through the glass, which of course is valuable when you put this in a hazardous area because you don't want to have to remove the front cover if you wanted to, for example, acknowledge the relays or make a small programming change. Now, for initial setup, I always recommend someone uses MeterView, our, our programming software for this series. But after the fact, once it's installed, it's great to be able to make a minor change, or like I said, maybe you want to acknowledge relays or look at your max and min. And for those kinds of simple operations, these safe touch buttons are great. It looks like that's all the questions we have for today. So once again, I want to thank you for your attendance, ask you to fill out that survey should it show up when you leave, and hopefully we will see you at another Precision Digital presentation. So thank you very much, Owen. Thanks to everyone who attended. You all have a good rest of your week. Bye. Thank you very much.